Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 3 Master. This Elgar is 115 speaking and let me welcome you to the Temple Ruins, an absolutely legendary level for its exceeding and exceptional difficulty. Think of Temple of Xi'an, that's what they decided to throw into the second level of the game in Tomb Raider 3. I was not kidding when I said it's gonna get more difficult, but hey, you had two games and two expansions of practice, it's time to put those skills to use. In today's level, we are gonna find all four secrets, we are gonna get our hands on eight crystals, and we are gonna get our hands on all the remaining 43 goodies. Furthermore, unlike in the previous level, we are gonna land 30 kills, a significantly higher number. Now, there are a couple of breakable objects here, but what I'd like to draw your attention to is that we are gonna unlock two achievements. Her airness, a really nifty shortcut I'm gonna show you right at the beginning of the level, and then we're gonna wrap up things with Eichmophobia. We briefly brushed with this achievement in the previous level, but that was just a simple taste of what's to come. There are, I think, five more spikes-related traps in this level. We're gonna overcome all of them taking no damage. And once you do, and you'll see this achievement unlocking at the final end stat screen, you're gonna feel like an absolute badass. Furthermore, there is now also an overarching achievement called Ricky Tiki Tavi we're gonna have to start thinking about because in this level and the subsequent three levels, we are gonna be encountering snakes, plenty of snakes, and we are not to get bitten by any of them, okay? So there's just something extra to keep in mind. Now, talking about snakes, let me introduce you to Majestic Cobra. Ooh, love this little tree trunk hidey hole. Let's get our guns out and be very careful. There it is, my friends. Look at it. Now, I'm sorry if you have a phobia from snakes. These shots will not be pleasant to you, so please look away. I'm gonna let you know once uh, once the cobra is down and dead. But uh, what I want to do, again, is to just take a snapshot of every single enemy type across this trilogy in both the remastered and the original graphics, albeit being much, much darker in this particular case. Now, the good thing is that despite the fact we are facing snakes for the very first time in the franchise, uh, they're very easy to handle. They remain stationary at all times. And we'll be encountering cobras and then a much less impressive version of rattlesnakes later in a different geographical location. That's it. And we are to take them down and not get bitten. Once they start flailing around like this, it's all over, okay? So, the achievement specifically says do not get bitten. Uh, I guess nothing wrong happens if you manage to get touched by them, but not actually bitten. I'm experimenting with this across other platforms to see what this means uh, for the achievement. I'm gonna try and do my best to not even touch them here on the Steam version. And there's another one here. And you need to come within one square distance of them for them to wake up. Even if you know they're there, Lara will be a fair player and she will not even aim at them until they start trying to bite her. God damn it, Lara, why do you have to be a fair player all the time? And there we go. Again, once they start flailing around crazy like this, if you really hate snakes, you can just keep on firing, but... um they essentially are down like this. That means the health is depleted. By the way, you can look now, in case you covered your eyes, looked away from the screen. Uh, I'm gonna warn you when there are snakes next time. Unfortunately, there'll be plenty in this level. Now, using the lever here, we can enter a trapdoor leading under some trees and roots and a hidey hole like that. There's a different way to get there that I'm gonna show you in a sec. But first, for the first achievement, her airness, we need to reach the treetops over here without the normal means. That is either the trapdoor or the river. That's why I didn't enter the trapdoor yet. And there is a really nifty shortcut we are going to keep in mind for our speedrun. Immediately hold the jump key and the action key and climb up here. And you have now saved yourself somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes and unlocked her airness. Get to the treetops without going down the hatch or into the water. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna skip any part of the level, but since we are already here, I might as well show you the goodies that are on the treetops so that we don't have to do it later on, okay? So, first of all, probably the most exciting goodie out of all of them, the ammunition for the best gun in the game, Desert Eagle. On the other hand, and the other side, something a bit less impressive, but nevertheless what we want to get, and that's a box of flares, okay? It's actually way more difficult to get to, but let me show you. 
Do not even try to make a grabbing jump. Just use the highest point of this tree branch, aim for the corner, and there you go, okay? It might seem like it's a good idea to grab, but that's actually what's gonna make you fail this jump. And now, let's slide down. Okie dokie. So now, you can use the trapdoor now that you unlocked her Ernest achievement, or you can actually take a more dangerous and I think way more exciting route, and I'm probably gonna regret this, but that's through the river. Now what I'd like to draw your attention to in the river itself is a swarm of piranhas. Now, <laughs> look at those vicious evil eyes and bloody mouth. The fact that something like piranhas exists in the real world, I just find it absolutely horrifying, okay? I'm gonna try and take a snapshot of them in a way that we can actually make out the details. Yeah, I think this will do nicely in the remastered and in the original. Yeah, you could still see their bloody mouth. Interestingly enough, not every single one of them had the bloody mouth. Some of them had a snag recently, some of them haven't. Not that it matters, they're all gonna chow down on Lara. So let's try and aim for that tunnel over here and they should not cross this threshold, you should be safe from them. And where we are essentially gonna emerge is a crawl space, and it's actually, it happens to be the same one we would have entered via the trapdoor, okay? Let me just show you where it leads, to show you that it's all connected. See, this is the trapdoor we would have entered otherwise, but I just want to show you a more exciting route into it. But of course, I recommend using the trapdoor to avoid piranhas altogether. And now I wanna be real careful. Uh, guys, another cobra alert. Oh, 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 there you go. Now, I personally actually find snakes to be quite beautiful creatures, very elegant, but uh, for example, my dad, he has such strong phobia of snakes that even seeing one on a magazine picture or TV makes him just cover his eyes and he'll have nightmares that day. It's really strong and intense. That's why I'm taking this seriously and trying to warn you guys whenever there's a snake. Okay. And I probably should have taken a picture because this was a different breed of monkeys altogether. But you know what? We're gonna get another opportunity real soon. Like I said, do not get too friendly with these guys in the previous level because they're gonna surprise you. They do not care whether you've been friendly in the previous level or you've been a bit more genocidal like I was. These guys are just gonna try and bash Lara's skull with their little monkey paws, which is actually really adorable in a sense. But anyway. <laughs> Now I challenge myself to get those pickups from that weird camera angle, MP5 clips and shotgun shells. Now, another piranha infested pool. What we can use, however, to our advantage is that uh, stony isle over there with a small med pack. Let's just reach it via a grabbing running jump. I don't think I ever managed to pull it off without grabbing, so I kind of don't want to start trying now. Now, ah, there's the swarm of piranhas right over there. Now be very careful because a running jump here is only gonna land you in this shallow water. You need to make it on the step to be safe from them. Once you're in this kind of water, they cannot reach you. But the shallow one which you wait through, you are not safe from them. And now we opened an underwater grate. Uh, can we... Ah, oh, got the it, Lara. Okay, be quick, be quick. They can still get you here, but not around this corner. We are fine now. Now, my friends, where we are gonna emerge, this is really interesting and ties to the cutscene from the end of the previous level. Monkeys, please. Ah, there we go. Okay, little fella. I also wanted to get this pool in the picture. Um, yeah, that might... Oh, oh, oh! Prime opportunity. Okay, awesome. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Since we've done this before, we need to let Lara into the picture. And we're just gonna repeat what we did before. Lara, get ready for some serious monkey kick. Show me your expression. Wait, her face is a bit weird, because she was blinking. Okay, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Lara, you got this, Miss Croft. What I wanted to do was really just take a picture of a monkey with a white feet and paws, okay? The reason is these are the aggressive ones. They're a bit of a different breed, I guess, warriors of the monkey tribe, and these guys don't care. They're gonna go after Lara. Thankfully, this distance is just a photo mode illusion. We are safe back here. <laughs> oh, the little bugger almost reached us. Now, that is impressive. 
Now, what I wanted to talk about is that this area nicely ties to the cutscene in the jungle level. Remember, Tony was talking about two of his colleagues, Randy and Rory, apparently being trapped under mudslide. Well, what you see now is the mudslide uh, the researcher Tony mentioned. And this is the official entrance into the ruins where Lara wants to get her hands on the Infada artifact. However, it's blocked off, as you can see. That's probably very obvious. So we are, from this point on, going to be trying to uncover an alternate entrance into the temple ruins, okay? Now be careful, these buggers are back to make it difficult. More. Oh, I can get never get enough of that sweet pistol sound. Now, something I wanted to show you, just a remaster detail. Look, the tiles are cracked. I mean, okay, okay, I get impressed by the slightest things, but this is... This is awesome. This makes it feel like such a natural environment and water is leaking through it. I have never seen a cracked ledge like this in the Tomb Raider franchise, which is why I find it so exciting. Now, a bit of a detour for Uzi clips, and unfortunately, I don't really know how to jump back from here, so I'm gonna have to take the low path again. But I'm grateful for every pair of Uzi clips we can get. Now, I think we can even jump across this mud, right? Wonderful. That saved some time. And you know what? I'm not really using sprinting that much, and I feel like I need to fix that. Okay, and let us enter tunnel, where we'll be ambushed by another one of these little guys. Oh! Ooh, close call there. And now this should look very familiar. We've been on the treetops. So this is how you would normally get to them, but of course we've done it earlier. In case you haven't used the shortcut and unlocked the achievement, feel free to pick up the Desert Eagle clips there and the flares over there, okay? Now, more hidden goodies to think about over there. You can probably already see a small mat pack in the distance on the tree roots. This is a bit of a confusing area. Uh, I'm gonna show you something. Uh, first of all, let's pick up the small mat pack. And now you can essentially make a jump to this ledge, grab it, shimmy and continue, pick up the shotgun shells. However, what I wanna show you is that there is an entire pointless tunnel around the corner behind the tree. And I, I'll be honest, I have no bloody clue why it exists. Now you can probably already hear a cobra, and that's because there is one in the lair underneath us, okay? I just really wanted to show you this tunnel. I have no bloody clue what purpose it serves, I'll be really honest with you. Okay. But before we descend into the cobra lair, all the cobra guards is a box of flares, so you can do the trade-off on your own if it's worth it to you or not. But let's go down... And now, guys, snake warning around the corner here. Whoa, 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 that was too close to comfort. Okay, let it fail, let it die, uh, die. Sorry, I cannot speak. And let's pick up the box of flares. Awesome. And now we are finally going to enter the temple ruins themselves. Because, I mean, honestly, Lara, we've been pretty damn unsuccessful so far. <laughs> okay, another monkey warrior over here. And a ledge which really feels like it should have held Uzi clips, but alas, it absolutely doesn't. It's rather pointless. But look, we found an entrance under the tree roots here uh, to enter the temple ruins. What's perhaps a bit unfortunate is, well, of course, there's going to be more snakes. What did you expect? And right over here is a cobra lying in wait and in darkness. Let's get rid of it. Honestly, the trick to Riki Tiki Tavi and... I mean, it's a great Jungle Book reference, I love it, but it's really just to know in advance where the snakes are. So again, level knowledge is what's gonna pull you through. And scary musical cues. <laughs> okay, we should be safe from harm, I think, from this angle. Okay, guys, the snakes are dealt with for now, alright? Now, we have a boulder to worry about. You can choose the right path and not trigger it at all, but I kind of intentionally want to. Yeah, there's no boulder on the right, only on the left, but I want to trigger it, just because... I don't know, there's a certain satisfaction about setting off every single trap and surviving. There we go. And my friends, this is where things get really interesting. In case you missed the first secret of the previous level, and the shotgun in it, this is where you get to pick it up. 
okay? Now, it's a bit of a bummer that the remasters do not show you the pick upable weapons even in other spots, despite the fact that you already have it in your inventory. To be fair, this is how it was exactly in the original. If you already own a weapon, next time you would pick it up, you would just see the ammo pick up on the ground, okay? But Tomb Raider 4 and 5 did something different, and they would actually show you, yeah, you're picking up the weapon, and in your inventory you wouldn't get a duplicate of the weapon, but the ammunition pack it comes, comes preloaded with. But still, it was valuable info for those of us making guides, knowing where you have opportunities to pick up weapons should you miss something. I guess for those of you who are following my guide and picking every single object, this is obsolete information, but it's a bit of a bummer they didn't implement it like that in the remasters, you know what I mean? Now, the fact that the shotgun was guarded by this terrifying looking statue is not a coincidence. Uh, honestly, they're a bit less terrifying now. They were way scarier in the OG graphics. The thing is, um, there are these Shiva statues. And, I mean, well, some people say they are Kali statues. I don't know. They seem more like Shiva the Destroyer to me. But... These guys are gonna be everywhere across the temple ruins, constantly watching us. Yet only some of these are actually gonna do something about our progress. So my friends, before things get really serious, I wanna take a picture of one of these statues frozen solid. And you know what? I think we should tilt it just a little. Let's take a picture here and here, and there's something so unsettling about those eyes in the original graphics that terrified me to no end. This, on the other hand, seems okay. Now, I believe these are the statues that uh, the filmmakers for the original Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie were inspired by, because these buggers will come to life. <laughs> Now be very careful, do not fire when they close up their arms like that. They're blocking your bullets. Only when their embrace is open, okay? Now unfortunately, amongst all that action, I did not take a picture of what this guy looks like reanimated in full color. But don't worry, I'll fix that mistake later on in the level. So my friends, Shotgun takes quick care of these guys, if you know when to time your strikes, okay? They are blocking some of those hits and we'd be really hard pressed to waste any shotgun ammunition at this point. We don't have that much to go around. But, what do you think of the new shotgun sound? I think it's absolutely sweet and delicious. Now let's pick up a crystal, and when we press this switch, we should unlock uh, the door on the right over here. But as you can see, nothing happens. Now when we press the other switch, this time, we heard a door opening sound, and the door on the left opened. So my theory is that it's here just to tell you that, yep, the gate opening mechanism on the right side doesn't work, and you're gonna have to find an alternate means. The gist of the challenge here now, under the depiction of uh, the Indian god Ganesha, is we need to collect two Ganesha keys and enter them here. It's funny, because overall there are going to be five Ganesha keys in this level, but for now we need two to progress through the Temple Ruins, and for that we have a challenge on the left and a challenge on the right. Now the right one I consider so much harder, and the left one I consider actually beautiful and very iconic for this level. So I'm going to reward myself with that a bit later on, and I want to get the harder one out of the way. First of all, touching this triggers a trapdoor. And in here is the actual hidden lever which opens the path to the right challenge above us. But do not miss out on the pushable block over here because this, my friends, will reveal a secret. Finally, it's it's really been a while since uh, we found one. Now, duck, because what you see here are poisonous blow darts. Now, I think this is the first of its kind we see in Tomb Raider 3. Correct me, guys, if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. And over here, yay, a small med pack, except, no, get out immediately, because there be a boulder. <laughs> this is really nasty. Now, do not worry, we can still pick it up. Oh, Lara, oh, gosh darn it, almost. Okay, let's get rid of the flare. Let's make a grabbing jump, and what I want to do is I want to face into the boulder whilst holding the grab, and this should allow us to pick it up. Now, I am struggling with this way more than I should. 
Ah, perfect. And hammer it, hammer it, and Lara will still pick it up, okay? So it's just a bit nasty that way. Now, there's no reason to get poisoned. Let's make a roll. And you know what? Another roll. There's another row of uh, blow darts there. I'm gonna light a flare to pick up an entire box of flares under these blow darts. Let's pick them up and let's back up just a little to not get into its trajectory. So, so far the secret had three traps, but a box of flares, a small mat pack, and over here another small mat pack and shotgun shells. Now guys, in case you're wondering why I'm calling them poisonous blow darts, uh, that's because they will incur a poison status effect on you. This is a feature new to Tomb Raider 3. Well, when I say feature, I make it sound like it's a good thing. I, I mean, kind of <laughs> from a game developer's point of view, but it's always bad news for a player. It essentially means that your health bar is gonna turn green and decrease slowly. And the only antidote is, well, to be honest, this is rather unimpressive, any med pack. You'll just be cured instantly. So it's really just a small hindrance to make you use that med pack resource, but there you have it. Now, make sure to make a running jump and go forward and do not waste a second. We'll end up in a quicksand. I think this is the first time we are in a quicksand at all. Once we get out of the deep one into more shallow one, I'm gonna explain the controls. It's really similar to wading through more shallow water, so not enough space for Lara to swim in. But unlike in shallow water, uh, we really cannot uh, jump. What we can do, we can get the one-handed guns out, so like pistols or Uzis. Two-handed ones, despite the fact they're higher on Lara's body, she cannot wield. So same thing like in shallow water. But no jumping is possible and all you can do is tilt Lara around like this, you can move backwards and forwards and she will wait. Uh, that's it. There are different heights of quicksand. As you can see, if you're too deep, Lara will start holding her breath and eventually she can drown. You need to get to the more shallow ones and once you're in, you can essentially use action to climb out just like out of water. So it's even more limiting and dangerous than shallow water. That's the only thing you really need to keep in mind, okay? I think I can pull this off without a grab. Oh, nice. And watch out! Stealing monkey! No, that mech pack is ours. Now, my friends, this is where I'm gonna make uh, this, level, uh, this level's first save, because what we have around the corner is the toughest trap to pull off without taking damage, okay? So, first of all, make sure to align Lara pixel perfectly. I'm gonna light another flare for this, this is really important. Let's make sure to align Lara absolutely perfectly facing that leap. Now let's press it. Let's make a side flip. Let's take one side step left. And now let's align her facing the actual middle. I am going to save the game here and explain something very important especially if you are interested in unlocking the Eichmophobia achievement, okay? What follows is the meanest trap in the entire game, and we need to pull it off without taking any damage, and I'm gonna explain the gist to you. So first of all, we need to keep in mind that the moment we cross this threshold, there will be two spiky walls coming at us. Now, these will immediately cover this half of the square and this half of the square, which is why I took such precision and care to be facing the exact middle. It's the only way to overcome these. Then there's another set of spiky walls, but these are more for show. They're not gonna reach you if you're sprinting. Sprinting is the key here. What we gotta do is also overcome the blade trap, and I've seen reports uh, where some people report it that taking damage from the blade trap, but not the spiky walls here, still invalidates the Eichmophobia achievements, and I believe them. I think it's coded rather poorly, where the devs just said, okay, players are not to take damage in these specific areas, rather than uh, differentiating between taking damage from the spiky walls and anything else. So theoretically, even if a monkey punched you here, you, it would still invalidate the Eichmophobia achievement, okay? So what we gotta do is we gotta sprint, 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 and get across this blade trap um, without it damaging us. The problem is you cannot slow down from sprint and make a jump over it. That would mean these spiky walls would hit you, okay? You know what the trick is? Maybe making a sprint somersault, and yes, you can, although that makes actually things way more difficult. No, 
You're just supposed to sprint forward and not do anything. What matters is how you time it based on the momentum of the blade, okay? So let's see if I'll time this correctly. I'm gonna try and show you how to pull this off without taking damage and without somersaulting. Okay, hold the sprint key. And let's start moving and as soon as it closes, let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, and my friends, that was the first attempt done. <laughs> So th this is really interesting. Uh, when the blade is like this, you can pass through it without taking damage, which makes no bloody sense. I know this is the blunt side, not the sharp one, but Lara should still stop. But no, instead you can just run across it. Now, guys, I've seen multiple guides how to do this online, and all of them just, I don't know, I weren't really satisfied with their explanation. So I try to offer my own because I struggled with this for such a long time and even in my original 2017 playthrough I managed to pull it off without taking damage by complete accident, okay? I wanted to really explain this in better detail and show you a setup that worked for me repeatedly, not just once in a hundred attempts, okay? So let me know in the comment section if this strategy worked out for you, I really hope it did. No somersaulting, please, it makes it so much easier, especially given the tricky camera angle in there. Okay, now what we can do here, we can use this movable block to essentially access this cage with a pool that we just open an entrance into with this lever. However, we need to check out the ledge over here for a secret. Now, okay, I think we'll need to move it once more. There's lots of block moving in this level, which is a bit annoying. Um, this is a thing I'm looking forward to in Tomb Raider 4 Remastered. It still feels so surreal to say that this is happening. Um, where pushing and pulling will be so much faster. It's great. Okay, now let's light up a flare. And even though this might not really look like it, this in fact is a ladder. Oof. Okay, always makes me very nervous. Now please no micro stutters. Now Lara, we don't need to fall down and ruin everything. We'll have to go through the meanest trap in the game again if that happens. Okay, this used to be insanely dark in the original. You can only see thanks to the flare I pulled out here. They added a bit of a light source, which I truly appreciate, but I still wanted to light it up. And now, my friends, there is a lever in this second secret, which will open up a path to the third secret a bit later on. There you go, just a camera angle for now, okay? But missing this lever can be really evil in trying to figure out how to access that secret, because you kind of have no chance to do it without it. Okay. But that's why I'm trying to make even, if you're here just for the secrets, sort of a comprehensive guide in the description of my videos, what you need to pull off at which timestamp just to get to secrets, okay? Because some of you don't want to spoil the whole thing, you just want to know where the secrets are without missing them. Especially since you're interested in playing the bonus level, which I completely understand. Okay, even though it's nothing to write home about, really, that bonus level. And I kind of wish it'd be implemented into the game in a different way. But I'm gonna talk more about it once we reach its geographical location. So into the pool we go, Miss Croft. And now... I'll just open up a path forward. You know what, I'm probably gonna take another rebreather here. Uh, makes me a bit nervous, all these underwater passages. In Tomb Raider 3 more so than in others. I'm extremely familiar with Tomb Raider 2, but 3... Uh, well, to be fair... Ever since I mastered the game on Retro Achievements, and I beat every single level, not saving, loading, getting all secrets, not using map packs, I feel like I'm ready for this. But that was still a year ago, essentially. Some time has passed. And I replaced that memory with, you know, Tomb Raider 1 Remastered, Unfinished Business, Tomb Raider 2 Remastered, the Golden Mask expansion levels. Okie dokie, so two levers in this room. And using them, we'll open up a crate over here. Let's get out, just as the flare went out. And my friends, this is gonna be really interesting stuff. So, first of all, what I'd like to do is show you the way to the third secret. That's gonna be our first order of business. Now, don't go for a breather. Immediately make a roll and swim the opposite direction because this is on a timer. Let me show you how strict it is. There we have it, okay? And this, my friends, is the levels... wait, I think it's the third secret. Anyway, it's next secret, doesn't really matter. Flares, grenades, large medpack, absolutely awesome. Now, in case you haven't yet heard it, yep, 
I didn't hear it either, no secret chime. And in fact, the third secret did not yet register. This is very easy to miss, be careful about this. This is the tile you need to swim over for the secret to register. As you can see, we are at three out of four now, okay? Be very careful. Missing this trigger point would mean you're gonna miss out on the bonus level of the game. Now there are two more underwater levers on the opposite sides of the pool. And you know what? I'm gonna just go for a breather real soon before pulling the other one. No need to get that cocky and prideful. Okay, that's enough oxygen for you, Lara. <laughs> I'm so mean to her sometimes. Okie dokie. Now I might be wondering what on earth did we achieve by pulling these? Well, let me show you. We in fact activated a fire breathing statue trap on these sides and ledges. And what these do is they illuminate invisible platforms. Or they should, but as you can see in the remastered graphics, this platform is invisible. Let me show you again. Nothing. And in the original you can see it clearly, but not the other one. It's weird. But it is here. You can only see its top. Now there's an entire invisible platform missing on that side, so don't even bother with it. Okay. And if you stay on the leftmost side of each square, you're gonna avoid the fire easily. It's no real threat. It's there to help you. Now careful. This lever's on a timer. Let us light up a flare. And make it in immediately, we'll leave the crystal and the statue for later on. For now, when you press this lever, you are immediately gonna have to sprint over there and get your hands on the Ganesha key. And of course, Eichmophobia achievement is still on. Oh my god, I messed it up. Okay, let's see if I can salvage the situation. Whew, okay, okay, so even with a blunder like that, we can still make it, that is good to know. I wanted to precisely roll into picking up the... Ganeshaki. Anyway, there is some margin for error in this trap, which is unusually forgiving for Tomb Raider 3. Let's not get accustomed to that, okay? Now what I really love is that if you check out the area behind the spiky wall, you're gonna find two goodies. I love little secrets like that. Really awesome. Rewarding exploration. And now, for another crystal, do not worry. It feels like they're everywhere, but this one is also gonna remain frozen. And I think our fine vintage Winston Akira Fox mind might have something to do with that. Okay, let's trigger that breakable object. And there's another bit of ceiling that's gonna tumble on the left side. We can safely trigger it via wading through here. I th oh! Oh, oh! Okay, okay. Make sure to stay in the middle quicksand. Okay, do not go to the sides. This way, Lara will not drown. You really have no way of knowing this in advance. But the middle part is more shallow than the ones on the left and right, where she can very easily drown. But if you, even if you notice she's holding her breath, it's not the end of all things. Uh, you can still make it to the more shallow part, so don't worry. Okay? And look, we must be close to the source of the mudslide that covered up the original entrance. In the original it was just dark, but here they added a little bit of light and a tree canopy. And this makes such a huge difference for the atmosphere. Oh, I love the remastered version of this game so, so, so much. For me, the remasters have effectively replaced the originals, which is... I mean, it's kind of awesome and a job well done. Now guys, what is your Tomb Raider sense telling you right now? Is it tingling like mine is? <laughs> Rolling is the key here, to trigger it safely and quickly, okay? Oh, this is interesting. Guys, you have a choice between a really dangerous trap with a boulder and blade traps, and you also have to sprint and get into a crawl space, or, hear me out, we can take the right path and fight a monkey. You will also end up triggering the boulder, which is why the screen is shaking, on the left path. Okay, so you are safe. And this is the crawl space we would have entered from, you can see the boulder over there, okay? So not only you avoid a trap, you get awarded with a really neat kill. Oh, oh, oh! And that one carries a small mat pack. Okay, okay, can I take a picture? Oh my god, complete darkness, god damn it. Okay, well, at least the mat pack is a consolation prize. Let's not forget the crystal, of course. Alrighty then. And now we are gonna enter a familiar looking area. Actually, let's see what's under the grate. Aha! Okay, that's the large room with the two Ganesha key, uh, key slots. And we're probably gonna end up dropping into it. 
Let's go as much down as we can to minimize. Again, this is the second time we're facing mandatory falling damage, which is a bit unfortunate, never a fan of that. Okay guys, so we have one Ganesha key, we overcame the right challenge, now we have left one to worry about. Guys, this is a long level, because after we complete both of these challenges, there's gonna be still the finale of the level, with its own unique challenges, so... Yeah, it's quite sprawling and epic. It is a certain take on Temple of Xi'an, I feel. <laughs> it has incredibly weak enemies, except for the statues. But the traps, oh my goodness. Now my friends, I cannot begin to tell you how frustrating I found this as a kit. There's a lever, and Lara will not press it, because it's not filled with water. This kind of design feels really cheap. I mean, if you have knowledge of the game's mechanics, you know exactly what you need to do, and that is to flood the whole place. But still, it can feel a bit grating. Okay, let's keep that great, <laughs> grating, great <clears throat> in mind. But let's also be really careful not to fall down immediately, because we might get poisoned. In fact, there is a blow dart mechanism firing across the room all the way over here, okay? Now above us is a bit of a pool, you can go for a breather. This will serve as a way back from a particular trap gauntlet, but we are not gonna use it, because we would miss out on a secret. Oh, let's see what the dart looks like. Nah, it's just a particle effect, that's a bit of a bummer, okay? Now be very careful, because there'll be falling debris, oh yes. Lots of falling debris. Uh, and the blow darts. And, and stuff like that. Uh. Okay. Uh. Okay, there should be three pieces of falling debris. We triggered all of them without getting crushed, which is very good. Now I'd like to pick up this small med pack, please, and not get poisoned as we swan dive over on the other way, okay? Now my friends, this to me is the area I think about whenever I think of temple ruins and playing Tomb Raider 3 in general. I cannot begin to tell you how intimidating this was to me and my brother. This is the central piece for me of the temple ruins. We were so scared to be here, it felt utterly hostile and inhospitable. It was forbidden to be here in a sense. That's the impression we got when playing the game, okay? Now, don't worry. I've grown up since then. And I know that a shotgun is a solution to many of our problems here, okay? <laughs> I have something really fun in mind. Let me show you and hopefully it will work out. We'll see. Okay, awesome. Now, a standing jump should be just sufficient to make it on that side. Alrighty then. Now, keeping Ricky Tiki Tavi in mind, let's get the shotgun out and another snake alert, guys. Just in case you're sensitive to that sort of thing, but don't worry, we're gonna blast this bastard to smithereens with our shotgun. And this is how you deal with phobias. I, yeah, we did not get bitten. If we would, we would be poisoned. These guys are poisonous, by the way, okay? Our health bar would flash green and our health would keep decreasing, but nothing like that happened. Really? Now immediately, back up, hold, hold. And somehow Lara's head and uh, hands didn't get crushed. Oh, actually what I was supposed to do is crawl climb. Because this way, we are gonna get under the blow darts and under the blade traps, okay? Let's pick up the small map bag over here. And I wanna be really careful. Uh, because somehow the blade trap can get us if we back up fully for a run up. Let's get our hands on a crystal. My friends, there is something really intriguing in that pit, but let's just keep that in mind for a bit later on. First, we need to solve a movable blocks puzzle. Remember the underwater lever I complained about, which irritated me to no end as a kid, you know, that Lara will not interact with it just because the place is not filled with water? Uh, that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna trigger the mechanism to fill that water tank with water, okay? And then mechanism is behind the block uh, on our left. Now, I'm gonna show you in a greater detail once we're able to move these. First, we can get this one out of the way completely and reveal a path. Now this can get confusing, I'm talking about a pit with a way, then there's a path here, then there are movable blocks here, what's going on? Don't worry, everything's gonna be explained. So first of all, 
There is a lever, and I love this. Whenever you start moving a block, you can pass through it with a photo mode. I'm taking full advantage of that. There is a lever which will fill the cistern with water, allowing us to interact with the underwater lever. Couple of rooms back, okay? And get the second Ganesha key. Now, to get to it, we need to push in the block on the right, then the block on the left, and then we'll be, have space to move the middle one out of the way, revealing the path to the lever. I hope that makes sense and is not too confusing. Not to be mistaken, with the first block, we pushed all the way in, okay? We're gonna leave that one alone as well. But not knowing in advance behind which of these three blocks the lever is, is actually pretty mean design. But nothing a photo mode wouldn't fix for us, okay? Now let me light up that flare, it's getting too dark in here. Let's press the lever, as you can see, the water tank is filled with water. Lara will now cooperate. Now the way to get back is, you can take this path if you so desire. Okay, boulders are in the spiky pit and you can essentially continue, if you want to continue, make sure to fall down here because there are spikes on the left, but be also careful not to get poisoned because this is the same tunnel with the blow darts, remember, that we swam under. Now what if I told you there's a way to avoid getting poisoned and also get your hands on the final secret of the level and that's exactly where I'm taking us next, okay? Let's light up another flare. My god, this is so dark. I've seen some footage uh, recently of Tomb Raider 3 Remastered shortly after release and I could swear it was not this dark on release, but I think they changed it by a couple of major patches. Now falling down like this, you'll avoid the spikes in this pit, okay, and there is a little crawl space. Now if you want to avoid taking damage, duck and press the sprint key. And this roll will actually prevent Lara from scratching her legs. If you were just to move forward, she would take a small amount of damage, which I find really interesting. Okay, now I want to be careful, not roll again, because there be a cobra, guys, cobra alert. Oh, okay. From this angle we should be safe. Start flailing, please, that means you are dead. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Now, all the side, the best reward there is, Desert Eagle Clips, a Crystal, and Uzi Clips. Actually, Uzi's is something that's gonna be really underused throughout Tomb Raider 3. And now, where we find ourselves is just above the blow dart mechanism. So, I guess we can swan dive and risk getting poisoned, or we can tilt Lara a bit to the side and swan dive like that. Maybe make her roll to flourish, and now we can underswim those poisonous blow darts, okay? Awesomeness. And now, let's just keep moving forward. Above us is a ledge with the lever that opened the grate in the first place. We don't need it. Let's climb in the middle to avoid fires. And on we go into the cistern. I guess if we caught fire, we could still sprint here and douse Lara in time and still beat the level without using a med pack. But hey, who wants to risk that? Not this guy. Okay, guys. Second Ganesha key will be ours. And essentially, two-thirds of the level are behind us, and dare I say, we're doing extraordinarily great. I saved only once, but we overcame the meanest trap on the first attempt. Let's see if I just jinxed our luck, because still plenty can go wrong. Hmm. Okay, this pointless climb of a block over here, I guess it's just here to ensure the monkeys from that area will not escape, I'm not sure. But, let's enter both keys of Ganesha. You can see the uh, elephant effigy on it, which is really cute. I actually could not make out what it is in the original, and now I can see it's a lion. I just wish the angle and tilting of the key would be a bit different. Okay. And I'm going to make our second save of the level in here, because there is another trap which might ruin the Eichmophobia achievement. Let me show you. The moment you cross this threshold, and please do not fall into this pit, if you do, you're not gonna avoid taking damage. The moment we cross this threshold, this ceiling of spikes is gonna come down at us, okay? Now, the only way I found of doing this without taking damage is actually a way that's new to the remasters, and oh, Lara's really not looking forward to that. Um, is to jump forward, immediately start climbing, but the trick here is since the Tomb Raider 3 Remastered implemented a move from Tomb Raider Chronicles where you can transition, uh, transition from ladder climb into a crawl, that's something that's gonna help you cover less height and get onto this space immediately and avoid taking damage. Okay, but just in case I'll mess it up, I'll make the second save here. 
And let's light up the flare. Lara, climb, 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 please. Why didn't she grab the rung above it? I do not know. Anyway, we're still fine. Make sure to start holding the climb key. Uh, sorry, the crawl key now, okay? And you're safe. If you were to do normal climb, we would take some damage, okay? I can't begin to tell you how happy this implementation makes me. Okay, two monkeys ambushing us. And the crystal's ours, not yours, guys. <laughs> Okay, to open this gate, don't worry, no more keys needed. We just need to destroy a bit of the ruins. Pull this thing out, probably cause a collapse. But the ruins will have none of it. They'll try to punish us for this affront. I'll show you. So, let's just grab the ledge over here. And there are two levers on each ledge. Uh, sorry, one lever on each ledge to total that we need to press or interact with. And the gate has opened. But I told you the ruins want to take revenge on us for spoiling them. Make sure to jump back again. And you will have triggered two boulders, okay? From safety. Now we need to get down safely. Remember, the safety, safety drop from crawl forward. And this way, we'll take no falling damage. Yay! Let's fall down here, just so the doors can close. Now it doesn't really matter if you choose the right path or the left path, I guess. But you know what? For this, I'd actually recommend the left one, because there'll be a room with two hideous Shiva statues. And this one's gonna awaken, and I want to be as close to it as humanly possible when it does, okay? There we go. Awesome, Lara. Oh. Oh, why is it not dead yet? Are they invincible during wake-up animation? Oh my god, I hope not. I feel like I've wasted a ton of ammo. Well, you learn something new every day, don't you? Now, if we want to wake up the other one and get its golden scimitar, uh, we actually first need to climb up. Let me show you. But what I like is that the other guy is in light, meaning that will be a good photo opportunity. Well, not like this, it's just gradually waking up. Uh, uh, well, okay, okay. Let's get down. Let's be fair. Oh, and let's capture the smoke, or not, because we can barely see it like this. Nah, that smoke just gets in the way. Okay, okay, this is gonna be perfect. So, look at this hulking monstrosity above us. I'm gonna roll the image somewhat, extend the FOV, and let's take a picture. Oh my god, why does it have to be so dark? Can we get out a flare? No, it doesn't work. Oh well. I tried. Okay, guys, so... <laughs> let me uh, do this again. And now, can we capture it in the classic graphics? I mean, barely. We can do this. Ah, oh, you guys just do not cooperate for photo ops. What's Lara's PR department gonna say to that? That's exactly how I feel when I take pictures with you. Okay. Now one cool thing, at least in the original PC release, was uh, you would at this point have these two scimitars in your inventory. And there would be this cool motion if you were to just start spinning them like this. I still remember doing this in my original 2017 Let's Play. Unfortunately... The collectible crystals kind of ruined that. They're like the third wheel, you know? Like, no one invited them here. No one really wanted them to the party. We were all just being very polite. But the crystals came anyway. So, alas. <laughs> okay, let's get a small mat back over in this small, insignificant pool. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth are we even collecting scimitars? Why on earth would we want to fully arm the statue over here on this archway. And the reason is, well, it's a door opening mechanism, essentially, okay? That's why. Fun fact, uh, this statue's hands and wrists are missing. Look at it. And if you give them the scimitar, it just floats there, which is... I was really hoping they would fix this. To be fair, this was the issue in the original as well. See, it's just floating at the arm stump. I was hoping they would fix this in the remasters, just give them the actual hand, but they did not. I mean, I know, they had other priorities, but come on, guys. Come on. Maybe the leaked Major Patch 4 will do that, which actually is already pre-installed on physical versions of the game. 
and I'm running the physical on my Switch and PS5, but guys, I have not noticed a single difference between the games in that patch version, so I don't know. Okay, and let's pick these up and not forget. Ooh, okay. And now we can get our hands on completely random Uzi clips over here, okay? There we go. And we get to choose which crawl space we want to emerge from left or right, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna take this one just to show you that this leads to a completely empty part of the ruins. There's nothing here. My god, I'm so happy we don't have to turn Lara around in crawl spaces each and every time. See, vast but utterly empty. But this is where it gets interesting. This, my friends, are Randy and Rory. Now, what happened to them? Why are they suspended in the air? Oh my god, the original graphics are so much more terrifying. Why are they suspended in the air? Well, here's the thing. You can clearly see this guy has been cut and cleaved almost in half. And this guy has a hole in his chest. Now both Randy and Rory in the previous uh, levels cutscene were trying to reach Tony. Saying Tech 4 to Tech 5, Tony I know you're there. It was these guys and we could hear gunfire from inside the temple ruins. But Tony just dismissed it there under let slide. He warned them not to go, he's getting out, okay? But here's the interesting thing. Uh, I think these guys were at the time Lara was talking uh, to Tony. They were fighting these statues. Now clearly the statues got to this guy because he's cleaved, most likely with a scimitar in half. But this one has a hole in his chest. And what I think happened is that he was not killed by the statues. I think Tony got his hands dirty and the reason I think that will be revealed in the final cutscene of the level. And I think Lara agrees because when she sees Tony next, she'll react in a way which only makes sense if she thinks he killed... Well, I can't say if this is Randy or Rory. But yeah, and most presumably this is where the Infada artifact was, but instead there is now just a Ganesha key. Now, the moment we touch this tile, the statue will waken. Now, I don't want to waste more ammo, so I'm only gonna fire once it's fully awake. Okay, anyway, it's there's just a rhythm to it. Always back up and it will never hit you. But it's interesting because we really only fought four statues in the entire level, and yet it feels like we fought a, an army of them, because they're everywhere just watching. But only essentially half of them will ever wake up, which is such an interesting concept. Okay, let's get Rory's flares over here. And now, despite the fact that we have a Ganeshaki, uh, we need two more. Yep, I wasn't kidding when I said there are five in the level, okay? Now I'm probably gonna regret this, but I'm not gonna save the game here. I'm just gonna push through. Lara, sprint, 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 sprint. Press this lever. Immediately make a roll. Uh, turn Lara onto the side here and... Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Oh, thank god. Oh. Again, my friends, I don't need to tell you. It's necessary to avoid this for the Eichmophobia achievement. So, yeah. Okay, okay, we're doing good. See, just around the corner, that was the second Ganeshaki. And now, let's get into the rear part of the ruins, and I'm gonna show you where to get the third one, and this is the most vicious of all challenges, so... I think we'll pick up that crystal once we've earned it. So, let's dive into this pool, make sure to do it at a 45 degree angle, and keep swimming diagonally like this. Because, my friends, in this room, there are two spiky walls, and there's currents behind them which are sucking Lara in. And the best way to avoid a current, this is something I explained back in Barking Monastery in Tomb Raider 2, is to swim diagonally at 45 degree angle against it. Not going the opposite way, that's a fool's errand. The current will always be stronger. But 45 degrees angle seems to be a magical trick which seems to work, okay? So let's do that again, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, oh Lara, please, 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 ah, oh, thank god, thank god, okay. At the moment you press the second lever, the current will go away and we'll be able to swim freely and pick up the third Ganeshaki. And my friends, if I'm not mistaken, and unless I'll turn around and directly swim into those spikes, we pulled off Eichmophobia, I mean, we are gonna see at the level end screen uh, in a second now, 
but I think we actually did it without a fail. Oh my goodness, okay, great. Now, let's just not forget the crystal. And finally, the three key slots. So my friends, these is where the temple ruins. Let me know what you think. But you'd be hard pressed to find more iconic levels for the Tomb Raider franchise. This was just a good, solid Tomb Raiding action. Not underestimating you, the player, who presumably have already beaten Tomb Raider 1 and 2 and the respective expansions. And there's no excuse not to in this remastered trilogy, okay? So put those skills to good use. Let me take a step here and before we take another, I am going to save the game. And yeah, let's see what Lara thinks of Tony's shenanigans. And my friends, what I was most afraid of has happened. We did not unlock the Eichmophobia achievement and I cannot actually begin to tell you why. Because we did not take damage from the spikes in the jungle level and we did not take damage from the spikes a single time in the Temple Ruins level. <sighs> and you know, all of you know what this means. I'm gonna have to replay both levels again and reach this point. And you know what? I cannot just leave things up here. I'm gonna show you a montage of how we're gonna tackle every single spiky trap in jungle and in temple ruins all over again and unlock this bloody thing. I will not rest, I will not sleep until I show you that, because I pulled this off on all other platforms, yet Steam somehow has an issue with what we pulled off here. Now, other than that, we have found all four secrets, we have unlocked all eight crystals and all 43 goodies, we killed all 30 enemies and we did so taking very little to no damage and didn't use a single med pack. We have also triggered five uh, ceiling rubbles, which I count as breakable objects in this level, and we unlocked her Ernest achievement and unfortunately, for some reason, not the Eichmophobia. Again, I cannot really tell you why. I did this in one single go, with no mistakes, with no loading in between, and yet... Ah, the game is very picky. To be fair, this is the first time something like this has happened. Now, this is Tomb Raider 3, and it's gonna give us problems all the way across. I should have known something like this would happen. So guys, let me do this all over again until the game is satisfied. Hey guys, no no no, I'm back here, Zelgar is here, uh, some serious talk time. So I have just quit the game and I look at the Steam page and what I see here is Eichmophobia unlocked, do not take damage from spike walls and ceilings in India. We unlocked it uh, three minutes ago, just as we finished Temple Ruins. But yet, when I open it up, I can't see it on the achievements list here, yet our percentage is at 72. Yet her airness. Oh, oh, there it is, there it is. Guys, we did it. We unlocked Eichmophobia. Oh, thank God. Okay, um, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry, I promised you a montage and now there'll be no montage. But hey, at least you get a sneak peek at my installed Steam's library. And I also want to use this opportunity to thank you, my amazing patrons. Blank Goople, Mick, Severin Drex, Enstickle, and Katie Danger. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being my Winstons and for treating me to a delicious cup of Assam tea in the Temple Ruins. I would also like to say big thanks for my caretaker Winston, 
Michael McConkey. Thank you so much for your support. And despite the fact that your monkey repellent has expired since we were in the jungle last time, you also ensured Lara wore some reinforced boots today, which helped her kick all the pesky monkeys at least 15 squares away. Next, I would like to give a very special thanks to both of my veteran Winstons, Andrea Pavelianiti and Alexander. Thank you guys so much for your support and also for sharpening and polishing both of those scimitars. Now, unfortunately, they were used against us. On the other hand, this caused Lara from the 2001 Angelina Jolie movie to make an appearance today, so heck, I'm not gonna complain, everything turned out fine. And finally, I would like to give a very, very special thanks to my one and only fine vintage Winston, Akira Fox Mind. Thank you so much for your generous support of the channel, for always sharing comments and ideas, and also for using your particular powers to freeze half the Shiva statues in temple ruins in place. This way, we were only ambushed by four of these guys, saving up precious shotgun ammunition and Lara not ending up turning into shish kebab. With your assistance, we made it through and out of one of the scariest levels of Tomb Raider 3. And on a final note, I'd like to thank my free Patreon members as well as to you guys for watching and making it this far. Today was quite a long episode, but for quite the long and tough as nails level, so I hope you'll find the strategies here worthwhile and useful in your own run. Things really couldn't have turned out better, except for the Steam hiccup at the very end. But hey, wasn't our fault, Steam was bugged out. And unless you're gonna experience the exact same issue with Steam Achievement Unlock, you should unlock Eichmophobia and no problems using the strategies in this video. It worked for me on PS4, on PS5 and GOG. Okay? One thing I just like to briefly celebrate, uh, over the last weekend uh, we had our Extra Life 2024 charity stream marathon where we members of Tomb Raider community just had a non-stop stream going on passing the torch from one to another with all our audience and viewers playing Tomb Raider games across the franchise and having an absolute blast. In case you couldn't make it and still want to check it out, I'm going to provide a link to our team page uh, in the description below where you can check all of our individual streams and if you feel like it, you can also still donate to Children's Miracle Hospital Network. The donations will be open up until the end of the year, either with our team link, either donating to us, the individual members, or to Children's Miracle Hospital Network directly. Every little bit counts and absolutely helps, okay? In case you cannot make it, just feel free to check out the streams. They were a lot of fun. Okay, now with that out of the way, I am now going to focus on preparing and tackling our next level, the River Ganges. And this one is going to be particularly tricky because it's the first instance where a level truly branches out into two separate levels, essentially, before it reconvenes at the very end. But have no fear, I'm going to show you how to explore and unlock everything in a single run. You can count on me, I've got you covered. I'm just gonna ask you guys for a little bit more patience, it's taking me longer to do these videos as I'm working on an entirely separate Christmas project, but you will see the video out next week, this I promise. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm about to practice right now. Thank you guys for your patience, your support, your kind comments, also joining in on the charity streams, and I'm gonna see you hopefully very very soon in the River Ganges. Until then, I wish you all very happy raiding.